Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV2. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Celtic blunder their way into the Champions League group stage draw after an 8-4 aggregate win over Astana. Billy Davis rolls himself out of the Hearts job. Gemma Faye retires from international football. Yeah, just a few of the talking points we'll be discussing tonight. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm absolutely delighted to tell you our boot room guest tonight is former Celtic player Chris Commons. Hasn't quite hung up the boots yet, but hopefully Ruffy and myself will be able to extract his game plan for the next couple of months and beyond. Um, although Ruffy's putting us under severe pressure with this telly appearance on practically every station. I mean, there are there's a few in Kazakhstan he hasn't been on just yet. No, just wait, I'll just a matter of time. <clears throat> it is indeed. I'm delighted to have you with us, Chris. Thank of course, you. lots to talk about, and the most immediate one is earlier this afternoon. Uh, I mentioned Celtic blundered their way into the group stage because I don't think anyone uh, in their right mind thought that it was going to be so close. Astana made a real game of it. They did. I think it's probably the first time since Brendan's been at Celtic that he's actually probably watched it and thought we don't look anything like what we've been doing for the last 12 months so it's a little wake up call that probably there's a few players in that team it's a bit early for at this stage putting on like but you know it, it's a difficult game going over there difficult environment and it, it is a learning experience and it's all about trying to gain experience there'll be a lot of young boys in that defense that are coming away thinking that it's that was tight but experience for the next level but i do believe it'll be giving Brendan, a little, a little bit of advantage that he can now go to the board and say, listen, if our main boys are missing, we're going to need reinforcements if you want us to compete at European level. Yeah, to cut them some slack, Rafi, I don't think the board are against any of his requests that are either pending or that he's brought in. The problem with this game is they were all over the place at one point. I mean, you were actually mm -hmm. looking and thinking to yourself, surely this team can't score seven. Yeah. Yeah, but I think we have to cut that down to the second half. I think the first half, uh, I think Celtic played possession. You know, I think they had 65% of the first half. You know, they didn't look under pressure at all. Just trying to see out the game, obviously, with the score line that they had. But it was the second half, you know, when uh, it was a 15, 20-minute period when uh, the year right, they were all over the place. And I think, as Chris said, I think Brendan Rodgers will sit there and say, right, OK, Beaton is a quality guy, you know, but to play in there as a centre-half when things are against you, particularly away from home, it's not going to work. You know, his positional sense was all over the place. Uh, and I thought that was the main problem, you know. But I think, if anything, they learned out of the game, and Chris will probably tell you, when you play European football, possession's what it's all about. When you lose possession, you're under pressure. It was you know, the game management that was yeah. looked, you know, it's probably the, the worst Brown he's played for a long time. But listen, it's, it's good that it's out of the way. The main objective was getting through, which they've done. They'll come back in high spirits, get ready for the weekend's game, and then it's going to be looking forward to the draw, looking forward to the next chapter. Yeah, I mean, when you look at the the team sheet, it was well documented. Uh, Hozo uh, Shimanovic wasn't going to start, so you knew Beaton was going to be in there. Christopher Ayer um, is a young lad going through a massive learning curve as well. Uh, and then from there, um, suddenly, I think in that... 15, 20 minute spell where Brendan Rogers summed it up. He said we were too loose. The second half was full of anxiety. And for a, a 15 to 20 minute period, the manager just suggested we were on the ropes. Yeah, it's, it, well, that's exactly how we've seen it at home. Uh, but don't forget, listen, Nia Baton is not a centre off. He'd not be playing, I can't imagine for one minute he's going to be playing centre off in Europe. Nor do I think Chris Adju will play. I think he's a terrific prospect, great young player. But we're missing three of our main centre offs. And if, he's, if Brendan's going to look into the market, then yeah, he's going to have to bring in a £10 million centre off to replace the three that we've actually got there. Because I think personally, the three that, we've, that Celtic have got at the minute are more than capable to play at that level. They've proved it. So it's, let's not try and throw, or oh, the, that's the defence that's going to be taking us into Europe. I don't think for one minute that will be the back four that plays in Europe this year. Yeah, I, think, uh, I, think one of, I think one of the big questions is what, what is Brendan looking for? Is he looking to go into this group to just compete or is he going into the group to try and get out of it? And I think the signings will prove what he wants. We all know he's ambitious. We all know he wants to improve year on year. But I think if he wants to get out whatever group they're in, 
like Chris, I think you need to buy in a couple of players. Yeah, can I just get your thoughts, Ruffy, on the goalkeeper? Because um, he lost one at his near post, which uh, I thought he was suspect. The defence didn't do him any favours either. But um, And then he had one ridiculous punch. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure where Craig Gordon you know, has actually picked up a manual and it says there are times when you punch the ball. He's mm -hmm. done it a few times. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, I mean... Chris again will tell you the ball moves you know you've got to make a decision you know if it's if it's coming right at you you know you just want to get it out of the road uh, as far as the goal's concerned the guy's come in and he's in a position where he thinks he's maybe going to cut it back and he's come off his near post and get caught out there but uh, I mean ask Craig if you, if you saw Craig after the game and said to him what do you think about the goal you lost I think he'd hold his hands up and say look I could have done better uh, he's an honest guy but uh, fortunately it didn't it didn't matter you know, but I don't I don't fall into the criticism as some people saying he's not a top quality goalkeeper who can't play European football. He can play European football and he has made saves for Celtic in European football that's won in the game. Yeah, OK. Uh, Celtic, just with regards to um, addressing the positions where they're missing uh, some key players, it looks as if they will confirm the signing of uh, Rivaldo Kutz uh, from Ajax Cape Town. This is a, a really promising young player. <coughs> and over and above that, Patrick Roberts, we reckon that loan deal is imminent. And then... There's big talk of a, a striker of quality, and it would have to be. Um, is it, do you think it's going to be a replacement for Dembele or to supplement what they have there? I th yeah, supplement, yeah. I can't imagine that anyone's going to be wanting to buy Dembele at this stage of the season. Uh, there's definitely going to be challenges along the way with only. Brendan likes to play one up front, so it's going to be difficult to try and get keep them all happy. You know, I don't think there's enough football t to try and get them. On the field, you know what Lee's like, he loves scoring goals, he loves playing, being the main man. If he's not playing and Dembele's not playing, it's, I think it can cause a few problems. I think two, two top strikers, when they're both fit, is more than plenty. But the minute Dembele's struggling, Griff's, we've known uh, a few problems as well. And I just think when you're going into a European campaign, if them two are doubtful, you need back up there, certainly. Yep. Yeah, um, now to the group stage draw Thursday, half past four. Uh, every one of the Celtic fans will be looking towards it. I mean, uh, there's chairman up and down the country will be more than happy, Ruffy, because I think there's a, a quarter of a million pound, possibly more, of a windfall for every Premiership club in Scotland. But what about Celtic as far as the draws concerned? I was listening to Ian Dart, the commentator, saying Celtic fans will want to avoid the likes of Real Madrid. I don't mm -hmm. think he's quite tapped into the market of Glasgow. I think that's the only place mm -hmm. they want to go. Yeah, but again, it, it's uh, what do you want out of the group? Uh, if you want to get out of the group, you don't want Real Madrid. You know, there are teams in that first pot that would give you a better chance of getting out of it. Uh, so. I think we have to wait and see who, who Celtic get. That, I mean, I, I think Celtic fans and Brendan Rodgers will want this this year to try and get out of that group. I think and that's what Brendan's really brought as well. It's really difficult to get out. The fact that people are talking about yeah. getting out of the group. 12 yeah. months ago, we were just happy just being yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, yeah, bring them on, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Dortmund, whoever, bring them here. But let's have a good, a good crack at Celtic Park. Now we're actually saying, you know what, we might have a manager and a squad good enough to get out of the group. So I think in 12 months, it just shows you the the progress that not only the team's made, but the whole persona of the, the, the fans actually thinking that we can achieve getting out of a, a Champions League group. Even if they go into pot four, Chris, because potentially, uh, I think you're looking at either Napoli, Olympiacos, Liverpool, you're oh, looking for you're one of the big clubs to get beaten yep. in the games tonight for Celtic to go into pot three. So it looks more than likely it's going to be pot four. Yeah. So again, I, I, you know, people are saying it wouldn't be as difficult as last season. It could be every bit as difficult Absolutely, as last yeah. season. Yeah. But it, it, it's the beauty of the, the draw, the beauty of the game. And the draw, it is, it's the excitement, isn't it? When you're watching all these teams coming out, thinking, oh, what a trip that'll be. be rifling through Jet 2's <laughs> package and where they can go and, you know, Expedia, we're looking for holidays and... You know, it, it is, it's the excitement. It's not just a game, it's it's going away and trying to express and show everyone what Celtic's all about. Yeah, and uh, just remember there are other uh, airlines and package holidays. All right, <laughs> you, can yeah. Book, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you can book them all. There's too many to mention, but I, I was just putting my PC hat on there. Um, OK, uh, Ruffy, um, just before we hit the break then, um, do you think they're well equipped and is it crucial that these three signings you know, I mean, Roberts can just fit in. He knows the score. Yeah. Uh, Kurtz might well, take a wee bit of time, but the other one, I think, could be the key to this, the, the one where they might spend a bit of money. 
Yeah, d defensively, yeah, if you go Boyata back and Simonovic, that, that is your back four. You know, you, be, you would be happy with that, that they've got the experience. Midfield, phew, you know I mean, you can't see anybody making it any better. I think it's a striking, but we don't know. I think Dembele is the big question. You know, is he going to stay or is he going to go? So, it, I think any other manager, any manager wants quality in. You know, if he can get two in, he'll take two. Yeah, um, for yourself, Chris, do you feel confident they, they should be thinking about getting out of the group? If I know Brendan, like I do, I think he'll just be looking to be competitive in them games. But there's no way they can turn out a performance like today and expect to get out of the group. But again, that's another, another matter. Uh, I think... Don't finish bottom for me. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, well, lots to discuss here. You can give us your thoughts on it. At Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Give us your thoughts on Celtic. Who would you like to see if you're a Celtic fan in that draw? Uh, Chris Commons is our boot room guest. And after the break, uh, we're going to be talking uh, about hearts and we're also going to talk Scotland as well. You have to really have the knowledge. Uh, Paris was the guest from uh, Ruffy, but he's been on the show on a regular basis. He'll have a stab at it. But uh, Chris just really doesn't have that knowledge at the moment. Too busy just hopping around different radio and TV stations and you should be studying these things. Um, don't think you can be on the show without getting caned, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Comes to the search. Yeah, it? absolutely. Um, now, before we get to talk about people who are hoping to get jobs, which of course will uh, switch your attention to hearts. Uh, what about yourself? Because a lot of people are looking and saying, OK, you've had the back operation. Yes. I know from your own point of view, uh, that was going to be the, the big decision for you. How yeah. close are you to making a decision? Uh, it's difficult to say because I've got a 12 week frame of where I should be. Uh, I'm seven weeks, obviously, out of an operation. So at this point in time, I am just Ticking the boxes, doing bike sessions. I'm starting to run on what they call an Auto G machine, which is full of air. Feels like you're running on clouds. Could have done with that in my career, really. But yeah, uh, it's it's just literally just day by day, t ticking the boxes. And you know, I've had no pain. I've had no sort of symptoms. So at the minute, I feel really good. So it's just every single week, I'll be looking to try and up it, get outside, run in different directions, and. You know, see if we can kick a ball again. Mm. Are you constantly getting scans on it to, to give you an update? No, no, no more scans doing it. I think if I need a scan, it's put, that's curtains for me. That, that, that would mean I've got a problem. So hopefully no more MRIs for me. Yeah. Now, obviously you had a, a loan spell at Hibernian. Yeah. Um, are, are they in with a shout of getting you if you're fit? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's a club that I thoroughly enjoy playing my football there. You know, I, I know Neil inside out so we keep we do keep in contact but you know there's, there's nothing there that's saying that there's there's the contract waiting for you it's just you know if i can try and play football i'm sure neil would like to get me in here burning that's for sure yeah how difficult um and i've mentioned it burning is there any other mm. clubs that are maybe sniffing around there well we've been looking at pot one in champions league there's a few i'd like to yeah. sh showcase my left foot so you never know yeah, absolutely. Well, you'll, you'll need to get your body, you'll need to get yeah, your body fat that. down. To I've be honest, no you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just about to say. I mean, you're if, thinner than me. If, minute. If, <laughs> if Brendan Rogers has not let me in these side, you've got no chance. <laughs> um, I, I mean, we wish you well in the uh, in the recovery of it, certainly. Um, but is there a point in your mind? Are you? Some players fear it. Um, that point where you think. What if I've got to? What if I've got to stop? I mean, obviously, there's a there's a media career that you might contemplate, but there's yeah. a big psychological thing in your mind if you have to give up football. Yeah, but you know what? I feel like I'm I'm coming out of football. You know, I'm 34 in a, you know a week or so, and it's just that sort of time where I'm wanting to do things with my kids. I'm wanting to enjoy the the afterlife of football. You know, I've, I've had a pretty horrific 12 months where I've had four epidurals. You know, lots lots of injections in my spine. The operation that you've just spoke about but it's it's the afterlife and I bumped into Ian Wright not so long ago and he said that if he could have finished early he would have done just simply because now he's he says I can't play golf I can't go out in the garden I can't play football with the kids on the garden it was and he was basically saying he says he had so many operations as his ankles fused together just to try and nick another year and he says he regrets every single second of it so 
he did say your health's a lot more important if you can play then great but if you can't then don't force the issue yeah and if you're fit and and you get the all clear are you mm -hmm. thinking year two years have you got a set age no i mind? think if you start putting targets in your head like that i think you can get quickly brought down to earth if you do pick up another injury I, you know i think i've had enough injuries over my career and enough enough you know kind of sad times you know it's just Every week would be great, you know. If I can get back playing football, I just take it for granted. And you know, every football will tell you when you're injured, you take grand for granted. Just, just training. So if I can just get back training and just, like I said, tick boxes. If it's not to be, it's not to be. But I'd love to try and, you know, give it my maximum. That's for sure. Okay, we uh, wish you well with that, Chris. Thank um, you, Ruffy. The heart's job. It's uh, again one of those situations where every day we hear of another person uh, getting interviewed for the job. Stephen Presley was the front runner. Dougie Friedman was the front runner with the bookies at one point, but he's now the sporting director at uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, this part, I, I just want—I don't want to get this wrong, Ruffy, but I, I'm looking at this uh, story from Billy Davis ruling himself out of the job, um, and basically the quote is scathing to say the very least um, this is released by the sports management company that represents them I spoke to Hearts, looked at their structure gave them a clear plan on how to uh, um, improve the club, it appears they're not ready to make the internal changes required to achieve greater success it seems they just want to change the figurehead, it is my belief just changing the manager will not achieve what's required for success and perhaps the alterations are out with their financial boundaries at present, I wish them well in the future um, now, that that scathing to say the least, there are other parts of it there where, you know, I think that it's quite clear he's not buying into this Craig Levine, you know, mm. pyramid that's going on with a director of football. Yeah, well, again, we're not privy to being in that meeting and obviously a manager getting in there, you know, trying to get the job has put his case forward and then obviously there's some of the things that he wants uh, to be doing at, at Hearts isn't to the liking of the people who are at the board and that, yeah, that's all you can take out of that one. I mean, guys go in and I don't know what you would say in an interview to get, you know, buy into, you know, what the club's doing. But obviously, whatever was coming for the other side, he didn't like what he was hearing and he's taking himself out of it. Yeah, um, OK, so he's out of it. Um, it's getting to the point where we're going to go, and then there were two. Um, Paul Hartley's in there, uh, Stephen Presley as well. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, out of left field, there's nobody else that... Uh, I'm thinking of who suddenly would be acceptable. Remember, you've got to no. get the fans on board. Well, all the names that was mentioned, you know, a couple of weeks back, you thought, you know, you know Steve McLaren, you thought, Billy Davis, what manager he's been, experienced, knows exactly what is required. But I think they're, they're going into these meetings, it's like, right, okay, that's, your CV's perfect, great, that's exactly what we're looking for, but you're going to have to deal with this. This is, this is, this is our structure. And the fact that everyone's just gone, no, 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 no. It's, it's, for me, it's going to end up with John Daly. I think he's going to end up taking the job. Uh, I think he's starting to get a few results. And he knows the club inside out, and I think it could work for them. But the, the problem is all these experienced managers that have actually I, I, I've been in contact with Arts or had interviews are not just walking out saying, it weren't for me. They're coming out and saying the serious problems in there. So I think it's a worry. It needs to get sorted very, very quickly. It look, looks to me that uh, a young a young coach who's trying to get into the game will accept the Craig Levine scenario, but an experienced coach isn't. You know, and that, that looks like the bottom line of it. Um, <clears throat> looking at it, um, I, Billy Davis is a strong-minded manager, so that's the first thing. Steve McLaren, I don't think, would have bought into it. I think if you thrust John Daly into it, you, you could wreck him, Ruffy. It's as simple as that. I, I think it's too early for them. They've had their fingers burnt with Cathro. Um, I think, you know, I've mentioned Peter Houston. I don't even think he's a consideration. Mm -hmm. Somebody mentioned Jim Duffy. I don't think that would be a consideration because of, you know, the nature of football and where they've worked before. Mm -hmm. But Hartley, Presley, suddenly mm -hmm. they become the front runners. Yeah, well, they were the front runners right at the start, you know. And the other thing you've got to uh, take into consideration is the supporters. You know, they have to be kept on board as well. And if you get the right manager in there, that the supporters are going to be right behind. It gives them a bit of bedding in time. You know, if a couple of results don't go their way, at least they are Hearts boys, so they might get that wee bit of time. But the other, the only other way is to go out of left field and go for a manager in the Premier League who they think could take them forward. Yeah, well, that involves uh, a fair bit of compensation as well. well the one thing that I would... It hasn't stopped him, Pierre. You know, hasn't, the money side of anything hasn't been a burden for us. 
Yeah, oh, well, here's, here's my point on it, last point on it with Hearts. Suddenly, the, 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 the story emerged that, you know, maybe Anne Budge was more worried about how the Hearts supporters were feeling when she, they sustained the, the Ian Cathro mm -hmm. uh, management plan for, for a while. And then they've got a new stadium, uh, a new site to the stadium being built. Are we going to fill 20,000 in here? Now I think the priority is trying to get a manager that suddenly the Hearts fans buy into and think, we're going to buy the season tickets, we're going to fill this place. They need to listen to the fans, ultimately. Uh, I think you can't forget Hearts is a massive club in Scotland and I think the Hearts fans deserve someone that they can buy into. It's not just another guinea pig that they've never heard of or another manager that's just up and coming. They need to sell season tickets. They need to get people in the, in the, in the ground. I think if they've got an experienced manager in there that is actually going to say, listen, I'm going to be making the decisions, my CV speaks for itself, I'll make you better, come and watch the football. I don't think for a Hearts fan they're going to Tyne Castle thinking, I'm not sure who's picking the team here, I'm not sure who's playing, I've got no idea what's happened to our best player. You know, I just think there's too many question marks around the whole setup within, and, and unless that gets rectified or someone says this is what it's going to be, then the, the, the question marks are still going to be there. Yeah, and just picking up on that point, I think whoever gets the job is going to have to accept all the things that Chris is saying you don't mm -hmm. you don't want to accept if you're a manager well, who excites the fans. I think Stephen Presley and Paul Hartley are going to have to give a little bit here mm -hmm. if they suddenly get into the box seat. Oh, well, maybe Anne Budge and Craig Levine need to give a bit, you know, maybe Craig has to take a step back. If, if people perceive him as the problem of looking over them, coming into the dressing room, sending notes, you know, maybe he should take a step back and just say, like, I'll be director of football and I'll organise everything else. You can go on with dealing with the team. There's and certain that could be the yeah. first, that, that's the way ahead. There's a certain role, yeah, a role for a director of football or, you know, the, the person that's doing bits. You know, I think as a manager, you need to be the one that's making the big decisions because uh, ultimately it's your job on the line. But it just seems like there's too much of a grey area of what is actually happening. And the fact that, like I said, Billy's came out and said that they weren't willing to budge in that sort of setup, for me, shows a, a clear sign that, listen, you are going to be the, the manager, but you ain't making all the decisions. And I think that's, that's going to be the sticking point for every person walking in there. Yeah, OK. Um, it rumbles on. Give us your thoughts. At Peter and Ruffy on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy. Chris Commons is our boot room guest. Uh, both of these guys have struggled with their question. You, you're going to have to step up to the plate sooner or later. Uh, yeah, no, no, we're already <laughs> struggling with that, which is why we'll get three reinforced chairs. Um, but uh, coming up after the break, we're definitely going to talk Scotland. We'll get Chris's thoughts on Gordon Strachan as well. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show here on STV2. Delighted you could rejoin us after that short break for some news. I'm Peter Martin and I'm delighted that alongside Alan Ruff and myself, we have our bit room guest, former Celtic player Chris <coughs> Commons, who uh, obviously is keen to try and just uh, prolong that football career a wee bit longer. And we certainly hope he's got maybe uh, one or two years uh, left in him. Um, now, uh, just before the break, we were talking about uh, footballers who'd scored uh, some phenomenal goals. Andy Cole was the answer, Ruffy. You're one behind. You're going to have to really kind of fight mm -hmm. back. One more question to get back on level terms with uh, look at that smug <laughs> look on his face there after getting that one right. Um, OK, we'll wipe that off you now by saying Gordon Strachan, Scotland. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, he's, uh, he's getting it in the neck at the moment for players that are left out. You know, Brendan Rodgers said he was surprised that uh, Callum McGregor never got the call up. What about you? Yeah, surprise he's not got a call-up, but I think looking at the team anyway, it's a strong team. Uh, I think even if Callum was in the team, would he play? Probably not. I just think it's a, it's a great time to actually bring Callum into the into the fold with him doing so well. And I think that's the, probably the annoying thing, that he has been playing so good, scoring goals, putting in really good performances and just being overlooked. But like I say, you can't, you, can, you, can, you cannot look through that team and think, there's no way he should be in there. I, I don't think that's the case. This is uh, Gordon's take on, um, you know, Callum McGregor not being there and the choices he has. 
I keep saying, if you look at that midfield, and then the squad, then there's a lot of good, good players in there. A lot of good, good players in there. And a lot of players who have done very well for us over the last three or four years who we can rely on and, and are playing at a good level as well. I think he has an abundance of uh, players in there, quality players. I can understand the argument for Callum McGregor, but it, it is now the time, Ruff, Ruffy, to throw someone in. All he's got Champions League experience. Is now the time to throw mm -hmm. someone in when the next two games are critical for us? It is. You know, Brendan's obviously entitled to his opinion. It's his player. You know, the bit I didn't like was I thought he was a wee bit dis disrespectful when he said, considering the players that I've seen are in the squad. You know, I don't think that was the right thing to say. You know, he was actually having a go at the players that uh, that Gordon had picked. But I think tonight's game proved that Callum still got a wee bit to learn. You know, in the European stage. You know, I don't think it was his fault or anything. I just think he had a when when Celtic were against it. You know, he was a sort of a vulnerable player in that midfield, and that's why he took him off. Yeah. I think he's got a lot. He's had a great season. I think he's a super player. I think year on year he's got better and better. And you could see why Brendan would say that. But I don't think he should have said, when I saw the squad and some of the players that were in it, my man should have been there. Yeah, well, of course, uh, the Scotland manager is the first to emphasise the value in players who have Champions League experience. I think you go back 10 years where Rangers were playing regular European football and Celtic. Well, I think both clubs were saying about 10 players to the squads who are playing regular in European football it makes a huge, huge difference. It's a, it's a great learning curve for the players and how to deal with big matches and atmosphere and how to travel, how you deal with travelling. So yeah, it makes a big difference. I can see progression in the team again, uh, Chris. The, the, the problem is it's, it's all about levels. Everybody can suggest to the Scotland manager, as they do you know, de for decades, which is he should be playing, he should be playing. No Aberdeen players and yeah. people up in Aberdeen will probably think, you know, we've got players that should be in that squad. But he always emphasises to <laughs> every one of the journalists who go into his company, you have to be consistently playing at a level to understand the type of thing that happens at international football. You you can maybe give us an insight into yeah, that. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge step. I think, obviously, European football is a, a great learning curve. But you need to be given that chance. And I'm, like I said, I'm not saying that Callum should be in the squad and he's going to take part in the games. I just think it would have been a perfect time just to introduce him to the squad. You know, I think you picked 25, 26 Three players. Seven. And I think that was uh, the Aberdeen boy as well, Shinny. I think he deserves to be in there. But Gordon Strachan gets paid to pick a squad that he thinks is going to win these two, next two games. And I look at a squad thinking, we should win the next two games. Which, if we do, there's not been much to talk about Shinny or... Callum McGregor. Do you see progress? Do you think we're getting better? Do you think Definitely, he has better yeah. options? I think if you look at the England game, I think uh, tactically we were superb. I think the work ethic was one of the highest standards that I've seen on, on a hot day. Uh, and barring the, the, the Kane goal at the end, should have been coming away with pro possibly the greatest result of all them players' lives. So I think there's, there's definite positives there. The squad's going to meet up again. And I think in all the meetings as well, they'll be bringing up that England game, going through the good bits, going through where can we be tactically a bit better. But I think on the whole, it should be a positive thing that if we get a result next week, that, oh, we're back in this, rather than, oh, we're playing a dead rubber. I think there's a lot of confidence that you could go into these games. Well, give me your take on it. Ruffy thinks six points minimum. Got to. Got to be two wins. Got to be two wins. Yeah. If he doesn't get that and he gets maybe four from six, do you think the game's up for... Do you think the manager will look at it as the game's up or will he still argue the case mathematically? Yeah. He'll, he'll, uh, if they've still mathematically got a challenge, chance, then yeah, of course, he'll take that route. But I think if you're wanting to compete and get into major competitions, you need to win these games because it's going to be putting pressure on... You know, going to Wembley and trying to win there. I just think you need to win these games. If you realistically want to play a, a championship, you need to win. Who are the certain starters for you and maybe his dilemma? Certain starters. Uh, I would say Gordon, Cheney, Brown, Griffiths. And the rest certain. is just... Supporting cast. No, no, I won't say that. It's got a, a, he's got a really good squad to pick around. Yeah. And, but you know, Gordon's a man of. 
he likes to keep it pretty much the same and stick with the same sort of players and he's, he's quite loyal to, to them players. So, you know, I think there needs to be a Celtic emphasis in there for the fact that they are playing at a very high level, level and they're winning week in, week out, apart from obviously today. And there's a good feel factor about it at the minute. I think when Brown's captain and leader, I think he gives it more confidence to the rest of the Celtic players. Uh, but there's abundance of quality coming from all around, you know, England and Scotland that's going to make up a great, I think, a really, really good, strong squad that will go and challenge. Two wins in your mind? I think, yeah, I'm very confident they'll get two wins, yeah. OK, um, we keep our fingers crossed. I think it's uh, one of those days on the programme where I love to say, uh, I hope you're right, I hope we are winning uh, both games. We're going to switch our attention now from uh, players on the field to fans off the field. This was uh, Supporters Direct Scotland. Um, it was a poll um, right across over 12,000 fans, uh, Ruffy, and some of the uh, points coming out of it uh, are quite interesting. I wonder how many points will be taken on board by clubs. Here's some of the negatives that I think. Cost of tickets, 70% say the prices were poor uh, and didn't reflect good value for money. Um, they're still not happy fans with what they're being asked to pay. Um, and, uh, of course, affordability is and remains a huge problem. Uh, inside the ground, uh, I think a lot of people are, are now veering towards the safe standing. I know the Rangers fans, uh, you know, in the 1872 have started to look to that as well. And they're 62% still keen on alcohol being <laughs> trialled in games. Um, don't, don't, don't laugh about that, Chris Commons, because uh, I'm part of the 62%. Uh -oh. on, the ba on the basis, Robbie, I just think it's preposterous that, um, you know, other sports can gleefully rub it in everybody's faces. They're out there, the rugby fans have got their beers in their hand, you know, cricket, they're all there, they've got a beer, but football and the common man is stopped from it. If you misbehave, you're arrested. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. But I, I do not think that, that, that they should be isolated and discriminated. Well, the proof would be in the pudding that uh, if you ask the police after a game what is the, the most uh, things that people get arrested for, it would be being too much alcohol. So, I mean, it, people have to be responsible, and unfortunately, the people who are not responsible, everybody else is suffering. Yeah. Uh, until you can actually, I think, maybe restrict it inside the grounds, yeah. you know, you have to monitor it. But, I mean, even, that, even, I mean, you're saying, even you're saying yeah. restricted is a form of discrimination yeah. as well. It is tough, but I think, I, I think they're being isolated yeah. as, well, as a I group, as a, as a supporter race and a sport, football fans, Eliminated. It doesn't go on as much. I think there's a there's a, a, a slacker attitude in England, Chris. You're laughing. Well, I, Kick I, it into touch for I'm us just then. I'm thinking there's 70% 70, 70 of people there saying that the ticket prices are quite high, but they'll still pay the money to get in the ground and probably do £30 on beer. It's just, yeah. I think it's, it's one of those that when you watch a rugby game, most of the fans are all intermingling. They're there to have, no matter if you're winning or I'm winning, it's, mm -hmm. oh, good game, well played, let's go and have another beer somewhere else. Yeah. I think our fans are that passionate about winning games. You have to, you know, cordoned off police, and I, I, I don't see that there's any sort of benefit in being drunk at a game or having a drink at a game. So you would firmly close the door on that Absolutely, option. Yeah. No trials whatsoever. No trials at all. No. I, I don't think that's. I don't think it's doing anything good for the game. I don't know why you'd introduce alcohol at a game. Yeah. Listen, if you're at the boozer at home, fair enough. But I just think yeah. again, it's it's all the police stuff, the fighting. There'll be. You know, it's the travelling yep. home, trains, buses, all that sort of stuff. Isn't the it? thing it is, I mean, it, I mean, we got the like the Scotland games, and there are drinking involved there. You know, there's the corporate lounges, and yeah. everybody's sitting and having a drink. Mm. So, it doesn't seem to be any problem at, at these games. It's the club games. It's what club, you know, Rangers, Celtic, Hibs, Hearts, Dundee, Dundee United. You know, with the rivalry. You know, and you have to say if it's not going your way, and you're full of alcohol, that's when it's going to kick off. Yeah, yeah uh, listen, I, I understand the logical uh, argument for it. I just think there are areas where, where we could have sensible trials yeah. on it. Obviously, uh, you've kicked her into touch. Uh, Ruffy and I are yeah. having a party at our house <laughs> at the weekend. It's 50 quid a ticket. I'll tell you right now, uh, the point. Lisa and Chris, <laughs> You're not coming. It's as simple as that. We want people who are a right good laugh. Uh, and if he does show up at the door, there'll be segregation. Um, anyway, on that, join us after the break for the positive from the fan survey.
Yeah, Chris Commons was so close in that one. There. He was only 99 out. Um, but uh, the reason why Gemma Faye is in the question is because uh, Gemma has announced her international retirement. She's still playing club football, I think, for Stjarnan in Iceland. But uh, uh, we wish her uh, the very best because she's given her all for her country, Ruffy. Yeah, and uh, as Chris spoke about it earlier, you, you've got to make a decision when you give up international football. And with the cap she's got there, she's certainly had a great time. But uh, she's bowed out after a big uh, European tournament, which is always, she's experienced it, been there. So, yeah, if she can concentrate on playing club football now for a couple of years, very good. Yeah, absolutely. I just noticed something that you were envious of. She had goalkeeper gloves on. You were hard. You never wore any gloves, no, did you? No, we didn't need gloves. We didn't punch the ball. We just caught it and uh, dis distributed it. Yeah, None absolutely. None of this palming the ball. <laughs> the ball <and> <laughs> absolutely. I bet you wish there was no such a thing as YouTube, Ruffy, <laughs> so, so that people can see you picking it out of the net. Um, Chris Commons is our bootroom guest. Delighted to have him with us. Um, just before the break, we're talking about the negatives in the fan survey. You can tell how passionate it is. We were arguing in the break about uh, having a a pint at a game you can give us your view as well at Peter and Ruffy on Twitter and Facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy here's the positives from that fan survey <coughs> and um, they were talking about 75% uh, uh, said that live television had no bearing on whether they were going to the game they're proud to support Scotland albeit 71% uh, admitted to putting their club first and um, I, I think the other point that was key there was, uh, you know, they're looking at being open to other kind of uh, competitions, an alternative European competition, should it be offered to them. They said they would support an alternative competition. I'm of the belief, Ruffy, that we still have to look at the, the Europa League and revamp and make it more exciting. I, I don't think it gets exciting until quarters mm -hmm. or semis. Yeah, but I think when you're at a club and you're not associated with European football, you you just want to be in it, you, know, you just want to experience it. You look at St Johnson who got a chance to play in the early rounds and I'm sure they all travel abroad all the games and when I mean, you're not used to being abroad, you know, that uh, you enjoy every minute of it. But I, th I think the, 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 the cup we've got with introduced of is it's just Irish teams. Yeah. At least you're getting a wee trip abroad. I, I saw somebody uh, saying it's great that they're playing Crusaders because they're a bit of you know, competition there. So. It's difficult. I think it's good to get all the smaller clubs who don't experience big times to give them a chance. Yeah, OK. Uh, we're going to get Chris's thoughts. <coughs> Beg your pardon before he goes on a certain Wayne Rooney. But earlier today, we were in the company of uh, three people representing Scottish women's football. It was, of course, the uh, Women's Cup draw for the quarterfinal stage. And uh, I popped into STV uh, to make the draw. Welcome to the SSE Scottish Women's Cup quarterfinal draw. I'm Peter Martin, delighted to have your company for the draw and I'm also delighted that we've got three very special ladies to help us conduct the draw as well. On my left-hand side, I have Leanne Crichton, a Glasgow City's player and, of course, a Scotland internationalist with 55 caps to her name. On the right-hand side here, uh, Fiona McIntyre is here with us, the Executive Officer of the Scottish Scottish women's football and I'm delighted that Vivian McLaren, the chair of the Scottish women's football, is also here to conduct the draw. Now because Leanne plays for Glasgow City and they're involved in the draw, she won't be pulling out any of the balls with the numbers on them. Uh, I would like to give you an indication of your team and what number is allocated to it. Uh, so number one is Cumbernauld Colts, number two is four for Farmington, uh, three is Glasgow City, four is Glasgow Girls, five is Hamilton Academical, now six is Hibernian or Celtic and the delay in that tie is because Hibernian are involved in Champions League football as well. Uh, number seven is Genefield Swifts and number eight is Rangers. So Fiona is going to draw out the home team and Vivian is going to select the number for the away team. So without any further ado, uh, let's get the draw underway. Fiona. Number five. Number five is Hamilton Academical. Play number eight. And they will play Rangers, who got a 4-2 win against Stirling University in the last round. Number seven. Number seven is Genefield Swifts. They had a close 2-1 win over Queen's Park. And they have got a home tie against... Number three. 
And number three is Glasgow City. So Leanne said uh, know who they're going to uh, get in that tie. And Fiona. Number six. Number six is Hibernian or Celtic. Play number four. And number four is Glasgow Girls. They had a close 1 0 win over Renfrew in the last round. Number one. Number one, Cumbernauld Colts. They had a 4 3 win over Borough Muir Thistle. I beg your pardon, That's after cool. extra time. We'll play number two. And they are going to play number two, which is Forfar Farmington, who had a convincing 7-0 win against Buchan. So that completes the draw for the SSE Scottish Women's Cup quarter final. Um, I look first of all to Leanne. What do you make of the draw, especially for Glasgow City? Yeah, I think for us it's it's a good draw. Um, we'll look forward to it. It's another game for us. Um, we played at the weekend there and we were glad to be back together. So, yeah, it's a nice draw. Great to see you in the Scotland kit. Of course, I've got to ask you, European Championships, so close. Just one more goal against Spain and we could have been looking at the next stage. Yeah, I think that was it was a tough one to take. Um, I don't know what it is about being Scottish, but we always seem to set ourselves up for a near miss, um, but it was a great experience. Um, the games were what we expected, um, and I hope that we can take that on to the future um, and progress to other tournaments. Yeah, just give us a little insight if you can, Leanne. I mean, Anna Senior um, worked tirelessly for the women's game, and now Shelley Kerr is going to take over. Yeah, I think it will be, um, it'll be a big change. It's been fantastic, the work that Anna's done over uh, the time that she's been here, and we're all you know, sorry to see her go. Um, but I think everybody knows what, what Shelley's capabilities are, and um, it's an exciting time, I think, for the women's game. Yeah, well, any win against Spain is a good win, so you did as That's proud. It, yeah. uh, we're delighted that you made it for Scotland at the European Thank Championships. Um, Vivian, uh, I've got to talk about the women's game as a whole. We've yep. um, obviously talked about it, talked it up mm -hmm. um, year on year. Is it getting stronger? Is the calibre of player getting better in your mind? I would have to say absolutely. I think since I joined SWF in 2014, the, the progress that's been made is just unbelievable. You know, and we've talked about the Euros uh, with the senior women and also the under-19s were in action uh, last week at the Euros as well. Uh, we restructured the SWPL leagues two seasons ago and we can see the increased competition, the increase in the quality of the players, the quality of coaching and really the organisation of a lot of the, the clubs. It's just been fantastic to see the growth, yeah. yeah. And Fiona, I'm just looking behind you there, SSE support of the Scottish women's game. I mean, uh, Vivian's just highlighted, Leanne's talked about the improving quality. You played for Aberdeen. Uh, can you see it week in, week out? Yeah, we're massively grateful for the support from SSE. It makes a real difference to us as an organisation. We want to relay that to our clubs and make sure that they can continue to improve, like Viv has said. We've definitely seen, since 2014, a massive improvement at all levels across the game, and we hope that's something that we can continue with the support of SSE. Well, uh, listen, I'm, I'm delighted you could spare uh, some time to conduct the draw with us. Uh, you can check it out uh, across all the social media platforms, not only on STV, but of course uh, across the SWL as well. Uh, and that'll give you the complete quarterfinal draw. I can tell you ties will be played on or before the 10th of September. Thank you very much to Leanne. Good Thank luck you. for the rest of your career at Glasgow City and hopefully more caps for Scotland. Thanks to Fiona and Vivian from myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. So there you have it. Just in case you think I saunter about everywhere, Ruffy, that was the draw there for the Women's Cup as well. Great to chat to the girls earlier this afternoon. Just before we finish, I thought it was only right and fitting that we maybe uh, mark uh, Wayne Rooney and 200 goals. <laughs>
200 goals, only uh, Alan Shearer ahead of him. Do you think he'll beat 260, Chris Commons? It's going to be tough, but I think because he's done it so consistently over the years, I think you kind of take for granted of how good he is, of a goal scorer. And it's probably not until he's going to retire that you actually look back at all his goals and think, wow. Yeah. Special player, Ruffy, but I'm not having <coughs> cupping his ears to the crowd. I mean, he needs to have a long, hard mm -hmm. look at himself, doesn't he? Yeah, and he's got, you would think, 20 goals a season, another three years. Has he got another three years? Maybe. Yeah, uh, I was going to give the uh, cupping the ears to the crowd to you, but then again, that could be your next manager, so there's no danger you're going to give us a, a, a quote on that. Yeah, Chris, we wish you uh, the very best of luck. I do hope the back holds up. I do hope uh, that you get back playing football still. Uh, people say, hanging up your boots too early, you regret it for a long time. Thank Fingers you. crossed. Um, Ruffy and I definitely hope he keeps on playing because the last thing we want is him taking over our show <laughs> as well. He's practically got it all sewn up at the moment. Moment from uh, Alan Roth, from myself, Peter Martin, from Chris Commons. Thanks for watching. Good night.